I like to sometimes take it back to my hip hop roots. I know some of you are saying, he's not black. He's a gypsy, and you're close. My roommate's half gypsy. He's gonna see this video and punch me in the throat, so I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be good times. Yeah, it's gonna be exciting. What I'm gonna focus on tonight is my heritage. Does anyone wanna take a shot at what, where, the, where I might be from? Anybody? India. Dang it, yes, that's it. I thought I could drag that out a little longer. Okay, good. Yes, I am Indian. And I know that now some of you are thinking, I do have a doctor's appointment this week. <laughs> I should pick up a Slurpee and call a cab. Yeah, it's true. But there's some funny things about being Indian. Um, and I'm going I'm to start with the craziest, right? How many arranged marriages do we have out there? <laughs> Raise your hand. Nobody? Every time I ask that question, same response. Why? Because nobody in their right mind would ask their family to help them find a mate. In my family, it would be my mom, right? Uh, this woman couldn't even get my clothes order right when I'd send her to the store to buy me clothes for when I was in high school. It's one of the reasons I spent eighth grade in a locker. You know what I mean? This was, and we would have these conversations all the time. She would come in and say, Mom, Mom, I said, buy me a polo shirt. Hey, shut up. You told me to buy you a shirt with a man and a horse. No, I said, buy me a shirt with a man on a horse. On a horse. This is a man with a cat. Or a duck. I'm not even sure what this is. So the next day I'd, go, you know, the next day I'd be at school, and a buddy would come up to me, hey man, nice shirt. Is that guy throwing up? What's going on there? That's terrible. Oh, this? This is, no. See, this is, um, it's Scandinavian. That's what it is. You know, Ralph Lauren is polo. This is Jimmy Lauren, his cousin. You know, so I'm thinking, this is the woman that I'm gonna have pick out my bride? I can just see the reception now after the wedding. Hey, Sam. Hey, Rinka, she's nice. Does she have a beard? And an Adam's apple? Is that what I saw? Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, well, yes. She's from Tibet, up in the mountains. And so there's not a lot of oxygen, it's very cold. Thanks, Mom. So, that's my mom. But my dad's kind of crazy, too. All right? My dad decided when we moved to the States in the 70s that he wanted to get acclimated to the culture. So he decided he's going to buy a book. And, and just whatever the book tells him to do, he's going to do. So he bought a book. And you guys remember, some of you maybe, from the 70s, that the big craze was jogging. Right? Yeah. So the man bought the jogging book. Right? Last year, he competed in his sixth marathon. Wow. Yeah. Give him a round of applause. Yeah, the man is a 61-year-old running machine. If he keeps it up, we're going to have to hook him up to a machine. So it's cyclical. That's how that works. No? Okay. And so uh, I know and some of you guys are thinking, your family full of runners, huh? Because you guys look like you're built for speed. Or watching TV. And we are. I watch TV very fast. <laughs> this is going everywhere. All right, look. The reality is, how many of you guys have ever been to a marathon? Anybody? No? Oh, you have been one. Okay, excellent, excellent. And you know they're like a love fest, oh, yeah. right? Everybody cheers for everybody, yeah. right? It's like Woodstock, running, yeah. only, and also it looks like a lot of people are on drugs. At least the running styles are. I remember, you know, because you can, and then they let anybody in, right? You can be somebody who's as graceful as a gazelle, or you can, you know, run with the style of like, <sighs> A PCP addict that's being, you know, pepper maced. It's the same deal. And everybody cheers for everybody. It's a, it's a beautiful thing. You know, and it doesn't matter who you are. If you join, I mean, if you sign up, you can run. And if you're Kenyan, they'll give you a check at the end. Right? And the thing is, my dad's been running in these things for a long time. And I remember the first time that uh, he ran in one. And how proud my sister and I were of him when he finished. He didn't win. Because again, he's not Kenyan, but he finished. And it's very rare in your life that you know you get to be around for your parents' achievements. You know, for them doing well. Usually, they're around for yours, right? Like you're a Boy Scout, you get your first award, or uh, you catch your first fish on your first fishing trip. You know, you you punch a girl in the stomach for the first time. You know, so hey, I know that sounds rude, but I'm just gonna say right now I'm gonna defend myself. It was my turn. It was her bike, but it was my turn. 
And don't feel bad for her, she became a doctor. And I'm a week away from moving into the homeless guy down in La Cienca. So, you know, she's doing fine. It's called karma. Get on board. But anyway, um, yeah, the thing, about, uh, the thing about marathons is, again, they're constantly being dominated by the Kenyans, which I don't have a problem with. Have you ever been to Kenya, though? It's kind of an unfair advantage. Like, here's your house, and then 600 miles away, there's a grocery store. They're running everywhere. And right in the middle of it, cheat them. You know what I'm saying? So some guy said, hey, you know, if you go over to America, you just put on some shoes, and uh, you outrun some white people, no offense. You're going to get a check. And they're like, cha-ching, let's do it. You know, why wouldn't they? So that's how that whole thing works. But, you know, and Kenyans, you think, they're so good at marathons. Maybe they in uh, invented it, but they didn't. You'd be surprised. I look up stuff on Wikipedia all the time, so I found that out. <laughs> and actually, the marathon was invented by the Greeks, right? Because in 490 BC or AD, I can't remember, but I realize that there is a difference between the two of them. <laughs> I didn't say I could read, I just said I looked it up on Wikipedia. <laughs> a, uh, there was a battle in the city of Marathon, and the Greeks won that battle. And some guy named Flip Soup, Flip Soup, Bob, he was told by the army commanders that he needed to run back to the city of Athens and tell the leadership that they had won. So I could just see Bob trucking, and at first he's like, we won, we won. But you know, like mile 15, he's like, son, I don't even know where the door is. And he finally gets there, and they're like, Bob, you're back. And he's like, it's... And then he, they, then he dies. Yeah. Right? And how do we choose to celebrate it? But we came up with a race. This is how we celebrated the man's life. So I'm thinking to myself, what if this is how we celebrated other historical tragedies? Hey, Jimmy, you going to have the blimp ready for this year's Hindenburg? Oh, yeah. I'm going to blow up right out, of the, right out of the gate. The Hindenburg's people was a tragedy. Okay. So we'll move it on. Or something like, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Come on up to the North Shore. Watch the big ships go through the slalom in this year's Titanic. <laughs> Lifeguards not included. All right, we're going to move on to the last joke of the night. And then you guys can go home and go to bed. <clears throat> so, you know, growing up, it's a cultural thing. All these different anomalies, you know, show up, and my parents are trying to fit in. And I, here I am as a kid growing up, and I notice that I'm a different color than everybody else. That's because I got observation skills. And uh, I realized on TV... You know, there's no superheroes that are ethnic. You know, and then I'm thinking about now, I've, I've seen this show that's called Power Rangers. Anybody heard of this show? Yeah. Right? Okay. So I'm thinking to myself, you know, this could be a great opportunity for people in Hollywood to teach ethnic diversity. Right? And of course, yeah, they've got a black guy on there, and they've got a Chinese girl on there, but they're from the suburbs. The guy's name is Chet. The girl's name is Misty. It's not real ethnic people, right? So I think there should be a brown ranger. And his name should be like Miguel, right? And his power should be of the burro. Arriba, you know? That would be something pretty good. And they should have a black guy on there named Lamont, right? And he should have the power to pit bull, Michael Vick. Is it too soon? I'm kidding. And then finally, of course, for me, you know, there should be an Indian guy on there named Sanjay. And you should have the power of the elephant. And they can have a special episode where they talk about these racial issues and they, and they clear them up. Okay? And it could be like, the episode could be called Chores. And, uh, you know, everybody would come and they would pull a chore out of a bag and then they would address the fact that they were racially insensitive chores. Like Miguel would come and like, hey guys, Dude, how come every time I got to be more than long? That's not cool. I can do other things besides more than long. <laughs> or Lamont would come out like, say, hey, I don't know who keeps putting this in there, but I am not joining your church basketball team. I play the cello. <laughs> you know, and then finally Sanjay would get in there and he'd be like, hey guys, look, I'm sick and tired of this. Every time the DVD player breaks, don't call me. I left an IT job for this. I'm Sam Manuel. That's my time. Thank you very much. <laughs>